Ready? Three, uh, two, one. What's up, David? What's our next guest? Who is Our it? next guest is Smigel. Robert oh, Robert Smigel. Smigel. Awesome. Robert Smigel, we're having a writer on, one of the, I hope, oh, for many people's money, the best sketch writer of his yeah. generation. He, he's in the conversation for sure. He's one yeah. of the best I've ever worked with. Hall of Famer. First time Hall of Famer. Yep. Brilliant guy. Yeah, Smigel uh, used to, uh, you know, he's he's in charge of so many of the big sketches in the show. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I was always trying to write with him, um, always trying to get in there and just get my name on a sketch because I know it would always get on because he's so good. He'd write for you a lot and he'd write with you a lot. We, yeah, we had a, a good collaboration because I would just start, I was watching Regis. We'll talk about it in the episode, but I just started yeah. doing around the office and then he was a great person to partner with and then he could get the rhythm and make it even better. Same thing with Carson and stuff. So we, we go through a lot of process on my side of the fence with Robert and it's really fun. We go through a lot of the me begging him to do sketches with me on my side of the fence. But he also went on, mm -hmm. he does Triumph, you know, the dog, and he does uh, a lot of great stuff for autism. Um, mm -hmm. And he has the, the Night of uh, Too Many Stars, which is the funniest title. <laughs> of, uh, yes. And he, benefit. he he roasts us, basically. Oh, yeah. uh, we won't give it away, but at the beginning of the episode, a certain character that he does that's sort of canine-like gives a, just basically yeah. roasts David and I for 10 minutes. It's pretty funny. In a, in, I, I won't say how he does it, but he sort of poops on us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, D Dana, um, you know, there's Elvis movies coming out, not to change gears here. Austin Butler. Austin Butler does Boom. Elvis. And I'm such an Elvis fan. I'm almost worried to watch it because oh, yeah. I want to be really into it. You know, there's a funny Elvis story that we used to joke. Uh, when Elvis was such a huge star, which he always mm -hmm. was. Yeah. Um, but he's such a stud and he would leave the studio. He'd have Sonny and Red up front and they go, Elvis, there's a million girls out front. So- throw the coats on him. So he'd lay down in the back seat and they'd throw the coats on him. And uh, and then when they drive out, they'd all look and get around yeah, the car and they sense. wouldn't see him and they'd leave. Yeah. And he'd get away. And so they wouldn't follow the car. And so in the later days, there was no one there. And Elvis goes, it's pretty crazy out there. And he goes, yeah, throw the coats on him. Isn't that cute? They would still throw the coats on him and there was no one out there. So Aww. he never knew. Ah, They better have that in the fucking I movie. I always saw it. It's been long enough to, I just saw it interesting. He died in his mansion, yeah. okay, and he was on the pot. So I assume a half hour before he died, all you heard if you were in the mansion is someone going, uh, can I get some paper? I need some paper in here. Can I, anybody bring some paper? Wait, he needs toilet paper? Toilet paper. Well, he hasn't pooped yet. That's the problem. Well, he, maybe he did, but he, there's no toilet paper. Uh, he said, I can get I paper? get the newspaper to read it? Because I'll be here for two hours. <laughs> the other thing was, like, he would have Colonel Tom go on a private jet with people down to uh, South American cities and bring back young ladies for oh, Elvis, boy. you know. <laughs> And they, he had a thing where he'd want them to- um, Hey, let's not give away the first half hour of the movie. Wear a diaper. <laughs> it was one of his fetishes. Uh, what's your name, Consuelo? Jesus Christ. Here's a diaper. Strap that on. Uh, <laughs> these are just all true stories. You can cut these. Well, um, I'll get arrested. But it'll be great. Uh, I, you know, I ran into Riley Keough the other night. What a great The name. MTV Awards. Yeah. Uh, the granddaughter. I didn't put it together, even though I'm the hugest Elvis fan, because I, I didn't recognize her. So she's sitting mm -hmm. next to me before we're going out. I'm presenting an award and she's presenting the Elvis movie, mm -hmm. something about it. And and she said it was a great movie. And, you know, you got to trust her. If I was in the Elvis family, I would be so eagle-eyed on that thing. But it's never going to be as cool as the real Elvis. But uh, she's well, happy, so I'm happy. So I'm very interested in it just because Colonel Tom Parker, played by Tom Hanks, is in it. Yeah, I love that. And he is Dutch, and he's a was a really weird guy, and he's in complete prosthetics. And Would you know, Parker you like took fifty to percent. The biggest star in the world, Mr. President. You thought Colonel Tom would be like, "Hey, everybody, that was Presley." But <laughs> yeah. he's like, "Would you like to be a star, Elvis Presley?" Does I guess he talks like that. that Scare you? Uh, I just don't know. I need a perker damn sandwich. Anybody got a perker damn sandwich? Fifty <laughs> percent. This motherfucker took of Elvis's shit. Fit to the very, very yeah. end. And I would say he didn't have great guy syndrome. I'll tell you that, which I do have. By the way, James Austin Butler plays Elvis Presley, and he also played Tex <laughs> in one upon James Austin. What's his That's name? That's the guy in oh, SNL. James Austin Johnson. <laughs> what is his name? Austin Butler. Austin. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was going James Austin Johnson. <laughs> hey man, I, just, you know, it's a senior you were moment. You just think of any first names you could link well, together. Austin is a very unique name. It is first cool. or middle. I I, I plead guy guilty. Looks cool. I'm not going to say so, bad. Yeah, so I want to see. I think it's James be great. Austin Butler. Yeah. Um, is a cute kid. He played Tex in one of Ponce. One of 
Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, he did? Yeah, he was the guy. I'm as real as a donut, motherfucker. That's your favorite I saw movie. you. You were riding a horsey in Listen, that scene. Not to get away from Smigel, but I'm going to tell you that I, oh, and this is one man Smigel. life, I did see one of your old favorite movies on the plane of all fucking things. I'd never seen it. Three Days of the Condor. Oh, really? You talk about two motherfucking movie stars. Ooh, I see it every Robert year. Redford, Faye, Faye Dunaway. Dunaway. She was what so do you, hot. What do you want? I just want it to stop. Ah, I love it. Condor. Condor, where are you, Condor? That brings us back I'm to somewhere. Robert Smigel. Robert Smigel from Robert Redford. And that is our tie-in. And we knew we, we planned this whole thing. Robert Smigel is... Very funny. He co-executive still listening to us bullshit about this thing. That'd be funny if it, this is the whole episode. We just, <laughs> and then we go, we never got time for Robert We Smiley. really apologize. <laughs> we got on an Elvis thing. Yeah. Mm. But it's good. We talk about topical shit, man. That's what's going on in the world. Anyway, here's Smigel. All the momentum we had with the Lauren impression. Oh, we were... Oh, yeah. And you were saying, Lorne, you did an impression before that, before oh, Dana oh, Mark got McKinney. This. Mark McKinney did. Mm. Um, the only Kids person the who hall. did it in my first year was Mark McKinney. And he did like a beautifully accurate Lorne, like a yeah. well-observed Lorne mm -hmm. <laughs> and actually said complete sentences. Yeah. And it was very impressive. But then the next year. I just started doing cartoony Lauren on my own. And then I went into, I remember going into Dana's <laughs> office and, uh, you know, I, and I admitting that I so, sort of do Lauren, like, you know, I want to do the show and looks, I think Dana. And then Dana's like, oh yeah, I do Lauren too. And Dana starts going like, oh, what do you think of act three? <laughs> <laughs> just had that move. Like something Lauren's I, never done I in know. his life. I did a lot of things. He Incredibly, never did. Per it was just perfect. It was like this self-satisfied. Mm, we still have no fucking first act. I've got no fucking first act. Mm. No fucking code. Marcy, look what at the book I of Lauren, please. Chapter two. <laughs> Frank and ride a bush. Frank and ride a bush. Frank and ride a bush. <laughs> Frank and ride a bush. Cool. There was a lot of bush cold openings. Frank and ride a bush. Remember, Robert, when you made the cartoon thing where you flipped the pages? Which, what, was was it which you? cartoon? Well, I was doing Bush Senior so much, I didn't know that the writing staff was kind of like, again? So then I saw a yeah. thing where it's like a flip page where it was oh, Bush Downey taking his shit. Of this. Yeah, and he sp you spin it and see <laughs> me as <laughs> Bush. It was, really like, it was like a series of, it was like a a, one of, of those drawings. flip, flip uh, Yeah, yeah flip like book. a silent and what was it? It was like, was it Franken putting Bush cold open on the... What, what I thought it, it was Bush taking a poo or something. I thought it was scatological. <laughs> it could have been. I like Frank and putting the card on the on the uh, lineup. I have to say, Frank and takes a beating on your show. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming. He's coming, he's coming on, on very very soon, it's and okay. we will play yeah. him. I mean, this he's become like well, Sarah got him back by stabbing him in the head with a pencil. Yeah. Did you hear yeah, that one? Well, I were you there? Through. I was not there. That was after I had um, left for Conan. But, but do you remember this? Uh, Spade, I bet you remember this. So one of the impressions, I, I was the one, I think, who started that. <laughs> like me and Conan, I used to do this thing for Conan of Al. Um, and I feel bad because Al got me the job, actually. And I love Al, but, but he was tough back then. And so everybody kind of. Yeah, needed to release some energy. Mine was like Al on his back and it like a snapping turtle. Flip me over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I thought that's why he would, when he was running for senator, I thought he'll be great in there because Al is blunt and doesn't, he just says what he thinks. I thought that'd be good for he him. He was great, yeah. but on the but well, the boy, when he was in the Senate, he was my hero because he <laughs> he kind of like contained himself from being as confrontational. Like I mean, at the show, mm -hmm. his last few years at the show, I think <laughs> I think he was kind of unhappy, to be honest with you. I mean, he was like in his forties, and I don't think this is what he was dreaming of doing in his forties. And he I, I think it was, I think that's in his defense. Like he was confused as to what he wanted to do with his life. And then he started writing those books. And I think he found 
direction and, mm-hmm. and yeah he's always hyper political and that was fun writing with him and downey because you know he had he all had these dreams and then he's sitting next knowledge. to spade at read through and he's like what happened <laughs> it's like george siegel and just shoot me goes in the middle of a scene he'd stop and he goes he'd look at the crowd he goes i did a movie with elizabeth taylor and i'm standing next to this asshole now <laughs> well i remember jan hooks once saying to me schmeiz don't become one of those writers who's 50 years old and wearing blue jeans and sitting on the floor flannel shirt. whatever you do it's always <laughs> sitting on the floor <laughs> with a well, notebook it's true. i mean it's just you never grow up when you're at that and a show. little sachet where you put your bitterness in a bitterness pouch where like you just keep <laughs> well, loading and, things and in. al's defense didn't get up the show i did six years it gets mind numbing and it gets you're in a box of like no sun and pizza and ordering in and stress and everyone else's yeah. energy. And so you did a long run there too. You seem pretty normal, but that, that was a long run you had. I did a long run that I got out when I was like 33 and to do the Conan show. Yeah. And then I came back, but in a much more sane capacity, I just did the cartoons. Yeah. And, and all I had to do was show house. up on yeah, all I had to do was show up on Saturday. So I wasn't really a part of the the thing anymore. But Al was like, you know, there every day and he's like in his 40s. Well, let's get back to Smigel's unbelievable career. Do we want to be a little bit... Uh, do we want to go a little bit to Young Smigel first? Or would you like to go later? Young Smigel? Or what about... Can can my friend come on? Because he thinks yeah. Young Smigel's a fucking bore. To be yeah, honest. let me see. Who do you got over there? He's been he's been uh, he's been riding me ever since. This you is booked this is unique for him. Fly on the Wall. We have a, a guest with a special. You guest. have a guest with a guest Great. who's just I don't know. He just thinks that he can jazz it up. You know, you better behave. Should I bring him out? Yeah, bring him out. <laughs> Why not? Okay. This is it. Oh, goodness. What? Here I am. No. Here I am. No. Finally. <laughs> God, Jesus Christ, what a long wait. No, this is terribly exciting. So exciting. I triumph. Fly. Do not make fun of this show or us triumph. I didn't. Please. Oh, I know. I understand. Those are the ground rules <laughs> I have to work with. No, no, no jokes about the show. No, no making fun of anyone. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. No, Thank honestly, you. this is a great show. Thank uh, you. Fly <laughs> Not for me to poop on. No, no. Fantastic show. Oh, that's good. Uh, that's nice. Know, fly on the wall. There's a lot of buzz <laughs> I hear around fly. Uh, about yeah, fly on the good wall. job, oh. Triumph. Thank you. Yeah, the same kind of uh, buzz flies make around my ass. <laughs> You see, because it's not as it well, attracts shit in the show. Yeah, is what that makes the, sense. That you see the joke, you get Yeah, it. that took a turn, but yeah, okay. I like it. It's, it's, what, it's, it's a switcheroo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's called it's a switcheroo. Sw- no, Spade, it's, it's a great show. It fills a need, you know, because let's face it, Saturday Night Live, it hasn't gotten enough attention or retrospectives or anniversary <laughs> shows. You're it's right. Just, I mean, uh, honestly, I mean, just the other day, I was thinking this, uh, after watching my best of Finesse Mitchell DVD, <laughs> I was thinking, why? Why has SNL been written about only slightly more than World War II? Why not? <laughs> and today's show, my goodness, how did you land this guest? They hand up my ass. Seriously, I'm worried. I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned. This is your first season. You've already run out of people we care about. No, Smigel's a big deal. He wrote a lot yeah, of great sketches. Hey, sure he is. Everybody stay tuned. We've got the fourth funniest guy from the De Bear sketch. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to explain what the sketch was to people under 60. It's, it's, it's trouble. It's this tr- is what you're looking forward to. You already did Sandler, Rock, Mike Myers. This is your future. This is <laughs> pretending to be interested in... Questions like, tell me, in coming up with Goat Boy, which came first to you? The goat or the boy? Is it a boy who becomes a goat or a goat who becomes a boy? Our listeners, really, our 10 remaining listeners are dying. No, there's more. Ten. We didn't get the news. <laughs> no, I kid. I kid again. Oh, he's kidding, Dana. No, Thank no, it, your show's great. It's a very, very successful money grab. I mean, hit. <laughs> you have like how many subscribers you've got like four hundred thousand listeners right yeah i'm gonna say yes and not to this episode that's for sure but up to now <laughs> no it evens out now. here the 
Uh, All we can yeah. hope today is to beat Alan's Weibel's numbers. <laughs> numbers. And who better that to host? a great guest. Who better to co-host this uh, show than uh, Dana uh, Carvey, yeah. one of the all-time greatest cast members Stop. on Saturday Night Thank Don't you, continue. Triumph. And, and then, why? Why would you say that? <laughs> okay, it's go. almost as if you think I'm going to hurt your feelings. No, I think this will be a compliment. Exactly. Dana Carvey, one of the all time greatest cast members of Saturday Night Live, and David Spade, who was also on the show. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no, Spade's everywhere. Spade is doing great. He's everywhere. This is, Dana, this is actually a boost for you. You know, audiences Absolutely. are connecting with you again. That's what's great. I only wish, Dana, that you did this show like 15 years ago, you know, when podcasts were starting <laughs> and all the people you do impressions of were still alive. <laughs> <laughs> now it's I, like I've lost a lot of them. Now it's like, <laughs> hey, folks, what would happen? What if Ross Perot and Jimmy Stewart <laughs> weren't rotting corpses slowly disintegrating into the soil? So, I think it so, might go something like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're, you're trying to be president. Yeah, but can, can I finish one time? I'll just do it. There. I did. Listen to one time. your act. It's like the audio sixth sense. I hear dead people. <laughs> so, boom. I'm sorry. Is this wrong? This is a podcast. You're supposed to you're supposed to be complimenting each yeah. other. That's what it is, right? I mean, yeah, that's what podcasts yeah. are. White people complimenting each other. Yeah, we need yeah. more old we're white not, people. We're pretty nice. Old yeah. white people complimenting old white people. Old white people compliment. I've got the theme song for you. Harmonize with me, Dana. Yes. Old white, white people, people complimenting old people, white people. Old, old white, white people. people. <laughs> it's very hard to do over Zoom. I just realized. I, yes. Listen, Spade. Yes. Spade. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to uh, insult you. Oh, You've good. had an amazing career. Thank you. Yeah. Tommy Boy, then <laughs> starring in a string of hit sitcoms that no one remembers. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for him to fake laugh. I'm laughing. Hey. <laughs> and God bless Bernie Brillstein, right? Yeah. He started the whole thing off, right? Great guy. Calling the creators of Just Shoot Me and gently coaxing Steve Levitan to hire his client. <laughs> you need client. a comic relief guy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No. I'm so sorry. I didn't no. mean to. Uh, no, it's that was an hysterical. E easy trip. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Snippity dippity. No, dippity I think we got to put people. We got to let them. No, that's that's uh, showed your thing. You did your thing. Did try and hurt your feelings. I need to know. No, not at all. A little bit spade. No, because I thought Triumph is a little older now and maybe he was not like that anymore. No, no. It's like it's I'm older. That's the problem. Like, I didn't give a shit about this when I started Triumph. 25 I know. I, li I liked old white people complimenting other yeah. old white people or something like that. that was we funny. looked it up. There's 2.8 million <laughs> podcasts. Are you kidding me? Nope. It's like. It's like COVID. It's just there's more every day and no one knows what to do and people are getting affected <laughs> with it. Here's what I've observed about this one, because I've listened to a few. OK. And what's very funny to me, Spade, is like you're one of the funniest persons in the world. This is an old white person. Compliment. Yeah, please. old white person. Please. Compliment. But on this show, it's all about a life you lived when you were like in the 90s mm -hmm. and you kind of have to revert. It's you're always reverting to that guy at the show who hadn't made it big yet. Oh, yeah. You're like always like, yeah, no, you guys were incredible and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just funny to me that Spade, who's had this amazing run. Well, it, it, it does. When we throw back. Everybody gets back in that around the writer's table and how fucking ordering Huxley's and all the stupid shit. It sort of throws you back to the dim lighting and I'm feeling like shit it does. all the time. It was a stressful. Uh. Do you, would you consider it? I would say, like, I love the show so much and people I met and worked with, and yet I was always stressed. Yeah, I, I also remember how normal. skinny your little office was. Like, I think people thought it was some palatial place. It's these little dungeons, and then I would go along the line and poke my head in to see if I get my name on anybody's sketch. <laughs> Smaggle. You remember? Do you remember what I my affectionate nickname for you was? No, what was it? Spudley. No, well, everybody had Spudley and yeah, Spadoodles. No, Chief Notton Show. <laughs> <laughs> Ch 
Chief Naughton show. Because I was never in the show. <laughs> it's so you horrible. You know he was, but... I wasn't in much. I think I went... You got in it in 93, 4, 5. I did go... Yes, third. once Dana left. Well... That's what was weird. The thing it's so was, weird because you were kind of pigeonholed. I remember your audition. Yeah. And you were very funny, but you were kind of like spade light. You weren't like letting your whole kind of persona you know, a, a but that persona developed come it out. later yeah and people like saw you as like this nice looking kind of blonde guy who did some impression i think you did tom petty yeah it was like oh yep. he's gonna be like a dana carvey type and then and dana carvey was still on the show yeah so i think people didn't know what to do with i think i didn't but i also wasn't in in full disclosure thinking i was the new dana carvey i was like are you this guy i, know the, you didn't I go you this guy's the best guy and he does a million things i go i gotta yeah, find yeah. what i can do and luckily like even that hollywood minute where lauren i was sort of teetering and then he's like well just do more stuff like that because that makes me a little different from dana and then i could find my own little niche or something i don't know it was tough but very that, that part was tough even the receptionist which was like the best sketch of that season oh yeah i remember someone in a high position saying yeah but could, could dana play that <laughs> no <laughs> shit no of yes. course he could That's i came in and played, played uh, something. an alien right did yeah, i play you an came alien in, in that i felt and bad Phil because Jesus. i said yeah. you know it's always hard smile if you're a writer and if you're a new writer to put yeah. mike myers or dana in something where they don't have a lot to do but you know yes. in your head you're like oh it'd be fun i have access to all these great people and i don't know they're quietly going that's eh, not that great but Dana goes, yeah, I'll do whatever. So I go, you come in at the yeah. end as an alien. I don't realize they're going to put him in like a three hours of makeup and hair. Remember you had a big bulbous <laughs> head on? I had a giant and thing. And I was and like, I oh no, That's I can't right. put Dana through this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it also makes sometimes... That was part of being on the team. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I have to say no Kate one complained. McKinnon still gets into crazy outfits Fucking, and says uh, two lines in a sketch. I liked on the 40th anniversary, Steve Martin goes in full King Tut outfit for three lines in a song or whatever because he's committed right. and it's fun i love it and everyone's there well, to have fun. and it's also like 70 million people are watching that one I yeah mean, it's all different yeah you're right everybody's yeah yeah but yeah the receptionist i mean it's it was so exciting to see a new person kill too like that's one of the great things on the show when that happens like uh that guy james when he did trump for the first time this year yeah it was great. It was yeah, like yeah. thrilling, you know? Uh, it was amazing, yeah. And when the audience finds it, because I had been sort of kicking around the show for a while, and that was a hard one to to get on. I think it took a few swings. Oh, the receptionist? Yeah, and then it got on with MC Hammer at five to one, and then the <sighs> next time it got on first sketch. So that, you With know, Roseanne. Yeah, with right? Roseanne. There's really, there was only like three, so that's the one you remember. It's like, bye bye there's, yeah. there's only two of them, but you know, if they remember what they remember, you know? Yeah. Church Lady was on more than 20 times the first season. Oh there my. 20 episodes. <laughs> more than they had shows? Were you yeah, on twice in a show? I would do an early chat, and then they'd, I'd do a good night chat. After you know, update. With Jack on Handy the Dana Carvey show, in. we tried to sneak the Church Lady into commercials. Remember that? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> no. For real, we did that. We were Absolutely. like, can we superimpose the church lady or George Bush over a commercial? <laughs> were you allowed to use that stuff on, Dan on Dana Carvey show? I technically, because of my contract, when I came yes. in, I owned the church lady. Oh, that that's was right. It was very no. different back then. Yeah. You could like write, you could write a list of the characters yeah. that you created before going to Saturday Night Live and Dana yeah. had a long list. And so, yeah, nowadays it's the complete opposite. Like they own everything and then you have... Like after seven years, you have to do movies with the. I don't <laughs> you know. Have to just do a mandatory. Movie. I know. Then you different. do movies. You go back to the show. It is uh, different. You do commercials and movies, and you miss shows. And you go back in the show. It's pretty cool for the cast. I yeah, think. it's really. And yeah, now I'm that's true. Now, yeah. yeah, leading up to this fiftieth, they're all, they're all, they all come and go. They, they told me to. Gerbitz told me. My manager said, right on the flight out there, write all your characters and give them to jim henry and i'm sitting there with a blank piece of paper on a delta going i don't even, what characters what are you fucking talking about i'm a stand-up so i'd go skateboard crazy guy talks with a lisp you know i'm just like making up something in case i write it one day or in case it sounds like a sketch i do and <laughs> right, it clicks right. anything like yeah you need a man or thing but robert do you want to talk about some of our hits your big monster hits and you well you know, we did Dana together of, yeah yeah, well, I mean, I Dana. So I was there for a year before Dana, 
And then BD. I got in in 86 with Phil and, and Jan, got in Kevin in 86 and, and he was like someone I had, I connected with. What I loved about Dana was that he spade. You'll understand this. Like generally like passive aggressive behavior rules at that show. Like who, I was me? great at that. I'm good. I could possibly, no, <laughs> my kidding. sketch is terrible. Don't put my sketch on. It couldn't <laughs> possibly me. I'm, I, I'm being paid. <laughs> like that's what, <laughs> And then there's people like Lovitz who are like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> They're anti-Semitic. That's why this sketch didn't make it. You know why they <laughs> cut it? Because it's funny. That's it. Right. It's too good. It, it was too <laughs> funny. That's why they didn't put it on. Yeah, I was John. Yeah, was great. I was that. sadly a little closer to John. I was like, Robert, you have no poker face. Lauren, I remember him telling me. There were people like me. I didn't really make big stinks though but i was you know imitating lauren behind his back like everybody eventually now everybody i'm told i'm told you go to the literally. show now everybody does lauren oh, uh, lit, funny. literally lit, literally everyone they all oh, we, you've seen this <laughs> have you well, witnessed this well that's james, what i heard james austin johnson had a good one you know and, oh and yeah yeah bill yeah. hater of course any reason no, but i think people members. they say that people just do it around the office oh just uh, around you just to it. each other uh, well, read through is going to start. Everyone get to their seat. You know, and that's like a first what year I loved, cast member. Yeah, right. But <laughs> what it. I loved about Dana was that he had, he just came in. He had a list of impressions that he like handed out to the writers. Like he wasn't, he didn't pretend that he was above doing that, which right. was like so refreshing to actually admit that you care. <laughs> Yeah, without being like cutthroat or anything he was just being straightforward i just thought it made sense i i was able to do a bunch of voices i well, thought well, well let the writers know because i realized you guys yeah. are just writing sketches and if someone sees casey case or something maybe they'd put him in i don't know of course you that's know. the yeah. best way to do it here you go here you go jack handy here you go odenkirk the here first you go thing conan robert you approached me with was robin leach doing some kind of Japanese pruning or origami. I don't know why. I yeah. don't remember. Yeah, because you'd seen his name on the list. But I had yeah. a catchphrase for that one. I'm Robin Leach. I'm yelling and I don't know why. Right. So I had that. I loved Robin Leach. But then it was, was Robin Chase. Leach for everyone yeah. under 70. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Rob Lynch was it's such a, host a of lifestyle is famous. Another Johnny one of British a celebrity man. that is no longer with us. One of my impressions. <laughs> you know, Dino Stapanopoulos, who our listeners might know, every time someone I do an impression of passes away, he texts me. Another one, another one down. <laughs> Whether like, it's sorry, Regis <laughs> or Bush, you know. You're gonna so. kill in heaven, Dana, someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> D- so, I didn't well, know Dino did that. I thought Robin Leach was so hilarious and he had a great hook for it. I don't know why. Oh, no, everything Dana. I thought Dana's Travolta was hysterical because it was so it was so not what Travolta sounded <laughs> no. like in the 80s anymore. <laughs> no, it was like, just like he's basically doing an exaggerated. Welcome um, back, Carter. Welcome back, know? Cotter. Welcome yeah, back, Cotter, for everyone the listening. The key to that, <laughs> if you want to do a John Travolta, just say the word weird. It's slack so weird. Slack weird. so weird. Weird yeah. is weird. the entry to that. But slack. That's what... But also slack. So. <laughs> <laughs> what's, that? what's that? Well, it's like Dana would say, slack it's, so weird. It's so, oh, it's yeah. slack. It's slack. slack so weird. You know, everybody should but just that's slack like, do we whatever can, they We want. very much connected because we liked... And doing, we like doing impressions that were kind of abstract. We like creating abstract impressions. And so, you know, Dana had some under his belt, obviously. And then I tried to help him with, you know, Johnny Carson and Regis. The Regis thing was very strange because, like, I wrote it for Phil Hartman. Mm-hmm. I wrote it for Phil Hartman and it went to dress. Really? And it didn't do great. Oh. And then Dana, in his gentlest, non cutthroat way, just happened upon me like a week later and was like, you know, I'm Regis is kind of small and Irish. And like, I had just had a total blank. I had just picked Phil because he was the oldest He's cast great. member. Yeah. And I thought of, I thought of him as just, okay, he's the old guy comparatively, but Dana was absolutely right. He looked more like Regis and then he started doing him. And well, I, I didn't realize when I started watching him in New York, he had essentially just, just got on nationally. But we would yes. get up around nine, Paul and I, and we would watch it and we just fell in love with him. Oh, yeah. And then the most when charming I, guy in the world. And then getting to know you, 
Yeah, just hanging out yeah. in your office. So we started, you know, bouncing off. Are you ready for this? About a control. This guy's crazy. And yeah. you got all the, <laughs> I think one of your things, very Robert Smigel or something about, you know, I'm down at the Shriders and I'm behind Broca. I can't, you know, I can't get a seat, you know. So we, we bonded <laughs> well, over all that. It was that thing of like yeah. the explosion. This yeah. was something that he really did on the show. Right. And then the, yeah. Broca's got the front row seat and I'm sitting with, you know, Patrick Swayze in the, in the back. Anyway, it was a great event. <laughs> yeah, he, it, and he takes <laughs> oh, yeah, a sip of his right. coffee. Anyway, it was terrific. We it's had like a he's got time. nothing else, so he just yeah. goes to Joy the, was there. Joy anyway, had a great we time. wish them well. Oh, yeah, when Joy hosted, that was always uh, Regis was uh, uh, working. But you can't let Dana around an impression. He, he comes circling. It's like, all right, just give it to him. He's going to figure out it control. out. And then his when he wrote his book, they said, we want to call it I'm Out of Control. And he had to go out, you know, honest yeah, to he God, never, I never said, said that. I'm out of control. That, that was, was something that Dana, Dan, made up. Dana Garney made up, but I don't understand. <laughs> Dana Garney. <laughs> but, um, the, you know, one, so we had, you know, and then Carson came around um, Ooh, yeah. and just, I started playing around with it. I think the Turners actually had written a Carson sketch. Did they? And mm -hmm. I looked at it. You showed it to me and I had just a couple of moves in my head. And then mm -hmm. it sort of brought out some moves that you had. Like the thing that I love Johnny Carson so much. He was like an incredible voice in the seventies. When I was a teenager growing up, um, I used to watch him constantly and yeah. um, he was so charismatic and he's still the greatest ever, but there was then Letterman came on mm -hmm. in like the early eighties and, yeah. And immediately got some, you know, the anti talk the, show or whatever you want to call that. Well, he was know? like reinventing everything. Yeah. And then Johnny, mm -hmm. for no good reason, started feeling insecure about it. You could see it on the show because he mm -hmm. started trying to do things that Letterman was doing, but he didn't know how to do it the way Letterman did. Right. Letterman mm -hmm. would just let them ha happen. Johnny yeah, yeah. would be like, we're about to do something that's a little weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a little different this is not not the norm that's oh, right yeah and, you know that was one walk of them, right? over we're gonna take a camera and it's gonna follow me i can't do them as well as you do but it was like just cl obviously clench your jaw like, you know, i'm gonna you know, clench your jaw thank you clench your jaw gonna, and down the here. camera is gonna follow me and it's gonna walk out of the studio and I'm going to go to another set. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> ask we ask know. unusual questions ask to people. Unusual questions that people are not going to know is even, they don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> All right. So let's start doing it. Now I'm walking. You see, I'm walking across. <laughs> and it this was is a just, bit. Yeah. You are witnessing a bit. It's a little weird. And it's so that was, weird, I was giving no. him this a little, a little weird. Wild. And then Dana had this expression. He had a couple of things like when Johnny like calls people over to the, the comedians are like funny stuff. Funny that, stuff. Yeah, that was funny stuff. For and those then, you, and then home, you had weird, yeah. wild, that weird, was, wild that was stuff. Wild. And for that those of you at home, wild. you're watching a thing called a television. You know how you yeah, would bring so the then it became that where yeah. we just did the overly set up Johnny Carson thing. And then it was so dry. It was maybe the driest thing you ever did on the show, Dana. And then, but it always Ed McMahon's. Ed McMahon's rhythmically kind of uh, yes. acknowledging it and, uh, you know, giving it like, <laughs> just like, yes, you are correct, sir, would always make it work. It was like the fact that you would say these strange things and then Ed would kind of affirm them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was the release button. Cause, but that was the first time, and I've said this before, but when I was on SNL and wasn't concerned with the laughs, I just was having so much fun Bean Johnny, yeah. and when I got the wig on, I am Irish Carson Carvey. My eyes are a little close together, and I, I go, God, I kind of look like him, you know. And then I could just look in the mirror and just, uh, just get into that attitude of being just this, yes. whatever that. Once you go into hair and makeup too, yeah. it's just that really was great. Set, set you up. And um, then the the third rail of the ones that really had a lot of episodes. Carson did Carcinio. We could talk about that too. Regis had a lot well, of I episodes. I love to talk about Carcinio anyway. Well, Carcinio, let's let's do that well, now. Only because because that was the extension of the Carson impression. Well, we did this. A, we did one before that that actually did piss Johnny off, and and then they. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if they asked you to do that late night history show, but they asked me, mm -hmm. so I did it, and I talked about it, and then they edited it to make it look like we didn't really give a shit how Johnny felt responded yeah. to it, and we mm -hmm. did. We were really yeah. upset about it. Like we did this sketch where. Arsenio. Oh, so Chris Rock gets hired in like 1990 
and um plays our senior hall yeah which he didn't do like i remember i that's another guy i got to see audition and he was hysterical and like obviously you know incredible obvious hire but i remember asking lauren uh, does it matter he doesn't seem to be an impressionist here to do our senior <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? No, um, don't worry about uh chris he's got the hair and he, he can do arsenio <laughs> just remember it's like black guys on the show always have the burden of having to do like every black person yes yeah. we talked about that with chris yeah oh like, you did a little bit i think david That's brought funny. it up yeah. yeah it is tough because everything just gets assigned and no matter you know, if it's even close. Okay, Chris, you're doing Al Roker this week. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Show is diverse now. I played an Asian character. I played Tony Montana as like a Cuban character. You know, I had a bigger. I you wonder know, if you could write that, to, Robert. Um, mm -hmm. Today is like, can you write anyone to play anything but they are, what they are? I don't know how they do it there. I wonder if they have meetings and go, could I play this or. Oh, at SNL. Yeah, yeah, at SNL. Well, they definitely let women play men. Men. Yeah. They still let that happen. No, I know. It's 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 interesting because like even like something like I mean, a totally blackface thing is obviously a red flag. And it's oddly it's something we didn't do in our era. And Never then it found started it happening funny in the nineties. Yeah. The nineties mm -hmm. were a strange time where it seemed like the floodgates opened and people mm -hmm. were doing exceptionally rude stuff. I don't know if it's because cable was starting and the networks felt the need to compete, mm -hmm. but you try too hard and you go in different directions that are sometimes wrong directions. You just don't know. And then yeah, it levels out. Yeah. But like I, I just did this puppet show that uh, failed, <laughs> whatever. Like, and, and we had this guy mm -hmm. who we, was going to do Obama and he had done Obama on the Conan show for like three or four years. And he just sounded exactly like Obama. So I wanted to hire him. And then I found out that he was white. I didn't realize I had no idea. I just knew he sounded exactly oh. like Obama. And they said, you can't hire him. Did they ever call you now, uh, Smile, to uh, write or help or come off the bench? And uh, No, I, I was there when Adam. No, they never call me. They don't. Arthur, they, they, they um. Oh. Although I actually sent Colin Jost <laughs> an idea this week and didn't, Did didn't you? hear back. Oh, didn't hear back. Just, no, Did it was an do? Anna Wintour idea. And I thought don't, was, don't try to give him Iraqi Pete. That's Adams. Actually, you would be great Iraqi for this uh, 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 Anna Wintour idea. Is that me playing him or Dana? <laughs> no, I'm talking about Spade. It's, it's a very. Hey, it's a very Spade, Spade could own that. Spade playing Anna Wintour. The idea was um, that she. Uh, it was like an update feature where Anna Wintour is uh, sitting next to somebody like, uh, who's the guy, uh, Jared Leto. He's always mm -hmm. wearing something insane. <laughs> they just had the Met Gala. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. Jared Leto. Yeah, he's got great you know. Fashion. And then it was just going to be Anna Wintour very quietly and dryly and very stiff, uh, insulting, you know, um, Michael Che's outfit, Michael Che's suit, you know, like... Uh, is this a fundraiser for victims of fashion? And then like, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then she turns to Colin Jost is like, you know, is that a suit or are you being humped by a couch? And then she starts <laughs> getting rim shots and just starts walking into the crowd and starts doing, <laughs> walking around. You know, yeah. Walking around the eighth floor. That's funny. He stands up and starts yeah, and just doing great. crowd work, but we, she's, That's comple funny. she's yeah. completely stiff, you know, and it's just, mm -hmm. if that tie mm -hmm. was any louder, Molly Matlin could hear it. Uh, <laughs> looks like Joseph A. Bank made it tonight. <laughs> what, what if Triumph was at the Met Gala? Yeah, what would he do? Oh, He'd be oh, crazy. Oh. Actually, I've tried to. I've wanted to do the red oh, carpet. At the That's Met perfect. Gala. That's one of Triumph. the few things I've. I still want to do as Triumph. Please don't let Triumph round Kim K. <laughs> well, she lost sixteen See, now pounds. Now I have like these personal relationships that I care about. Like I would never touch her because. Pete Davidson's a friend. Oh, friend of the show. No, I, he's a great guy. I know him. And But like Dana, this is something. Well, we never talked about the Carson thing, but this is another one. That, That's all right. I don't know if you want to talk about this, but. I'll talk about anything. We're 30. or I'm 30 mm -hmm. or 32 or whatever you were. Mm -hmm. And Dennis gets bounced from his syndicated show. 
Yeah. And I have this idea to do Dennis is now doing a cooking show. Right. Which we we called Dennis and he said, uh -oh. go ahead. We right. We did call him. I maybe thought you, that I did. Maybe you called him. Yeah. I didn't call him. Yeah. I, but I, I, still I believe like, I called him. Yeah. I don't think we. But that was like then. And mm -hmm. I and I thought in my head, I was like, this is my duty as a Saturday Night Live sketch writer. I can't play favorites, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I this is my privilege to work. Duty here. comes first. Yeah, that's how I seriously I took it. And Allegiance now, like, to the show. I would say by like the time I was forty, I was like, no, I would never do that again. Yeah. Well, I don't think at that point there was any sort of uh, idea that Dennis wasn't on his way with a career. Like he'd done the black and white special. He had the talk show. You know, Dennis no, was he, a star. I mean, all he did after that was host an HBO show that got like twenty M. Exactly. So yeah. to me, to me, I thought it was so funny, and the way you wrote it, Dennis's vernacular. Yeah. In, a, in a daytime cooking show. Got I don't know if paprika. you could quote some of that. I mean, that. maybe yeah. it, maybe you're right, but I feel like. I still wouldn't do it now. I wouldn't be able to. I'd be too nervous about whoever's feelings it was. Sure. I, I, I understand just that. I, I feel the yeah. same way. I, I like I kind of sometimes feel bad for Biden when I see him sort of lost or whatever. And so it's different doing it now. It's weird I just when you get older and life kind of kicks you in the nuts and, and you learn what pain is and uh yeah you get well more you know how careers are so hard and up and down you're like i'm gonna probably hurt someone's career somehow accidentally you know who would way, always, biden's hair looks like a spider web go ahead the one person who would always scold me when i was even when i was younger and i guess it's because he was sensitive to all the bad reviews he was mm -hmm. getting was sandler he was like like i was doing those cartoons and they were going oh. really well yeah, yeah. Uh, those, you know, and I would do were, a cartoon about like David Brenner or something. Yes. Being a guest on a talk show and it was fun with real audio. And I would use a real David Brenner story, but I would have him going on every talk show and each host would get bored and press a trap door button and he would fall down <laughs> and go like, you know, so he starts on like the tonight show and then <laughs> trap door goes down to Conan and then it goes down to like Tom Snyder. And then hilarious. Uh, I remember you know, that one. Yeah. yeah. And it was really funny. And everybody I played it for Conan because Conan was in it and he was laughing really hard. And then I get a call from Sam. Like, you feel good about yourself, bud? you feel good about that. No. That guy, that, what if that guy's home watching? You know, he's like had a hard His day family. and he's watching the show and he's like, yeah, what is this? Why? What did I do? <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, he did Brenner, didn't he? Sandler could do Brenner on the show. He did a great David Brenner. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but it wasn't nearly as mean as this cartoon. No, it wasn't mean. It wasn't. Well, remember mean. the one you did impression. where you had you had Stedman hiding from Oprah in the mansion. Oh my or god, something? that was that was from the <laughs> Comedy Central show. And it's interesting you bring that up because that was a cartoon I wasn't going to do. It was one mm -hmm. of those lines that I would draw for myself, which is, people are always shocked. You had. Yeah, limits. lines. Limits I did, too. but I, I, I like I didn't like to make fun of drug addiction. Mm -hmm. I, I always felt like when people are, you know, that desperate, it's, it's and, not funny. Ultimately, you know, it's it's you know. like you know everybody. It's easy to to reduce somebody to a cartoon character, but I, that was one. And another one was women's looks. I really hated mm -hmm. making fun of a woman for her looks because women are held up to these ridiculous standards and uh, it just felt shitty. And so this Oprah one was Andy Breckman's premise. And it, the premise was that Stedman, uh, every time Oprah wants to have sex, Stedman has convinced Oprah that he's an international spy. And every time Oprah wants to have sex, Stedman <laughs> pretends he's getting an alert and he has to go off. I'm not making it sound as funny as it. <laughs> no, no, but it, was, it was so it was, it funny was, and so I well. I like it. I broke the rule because it was just too funny, and it it remains like one of the funniest cartoons I've ever been involved in. <laughs> and I, uh, but it was Andy Breckman's idea. Also, one of the nicest people I've ever worked with, Andy oh, Breckman. Well, and yet he had this yeah. idea that I thought was too neat. Ask young. him about the Bears. The Bears is a big one. I Ask love it because Farley the was Bears. in it. I just want to say very quickly that I know that John McLaughlin, which you completely I created, love loved loved our sketch. Oh, yeah. Uh, Regis loved it. Perot 
loved it. George Bush Sr. loved it. Yes. And it was only sweet Johnny Carson got a little tweaked. And I don't so Johnny blame Carson, it. we should talk about this one because it was like uh so yes, yeah, so rock comes on. <laughs> I got I'm sorry. Oh. Arsenio. Rock comes Arsenio on and plays Arsenio. Rock comes yeah. on and plays Arsenio. And if this was at this time when Johnny was getting sort of threatened by Arsenio's presence. Arsenio was white hot. That's mm -hmm. a bad yeah. choice of words, I suppose. But Arsenio was like <laughs> Please stand on by. fire. Every, everybody was talking about him. And we did that thing of like, now I understand that this, you know, that would over explaining mm -hmm. thing. But in this mm -hmm. case, it was like, I understand you have a show. Dana, you should do it. You remember I understand you have a show and um it's um and, and it and says here he was like looking at his notes it says here that your show is up against my show yes and <laughs> it says here that. That. I, did I did not, did know, not that. know that and your that. ratings have actually gone up higher than mine and mine are like starting that. to decline right that's weird weird I did not know that <laughs> and now it says here it says further that your show is considered hip <laughs> and mine i am starting to be considered out of touch yeah <laughs> i did not Ed, did you know that yes no, yes <laughs> sir a, yes. a really sad yes yes but but the thing that johnny got maddest at dana do you remember this it was the first guest we had a throwaway first guest before we bring on arsenio it just was susan the shape of the susan scene. day right it was susan day and i had mm -hmm. written it for sinead o'connor for jan hooks to play sinead because mm -hmm. she had already done it and it was hilarious and um she's very serious and you know you guys are just yeah. would be doing not a not a lot of hair on her head that's just that, yeah. is, that is quite a dome <laughs> you know all that kind of stuff a little smooth <laughs> smooth on the upper turf yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. not a hairy woman sir <laughs> from um, ear to so, ear not a lot going but on lauren was like, uh, you know, she's done Sinead. She does a killer Susan Day, which she had done once on the show, and it was killer. Mm -hmm. oh, so Lauren suggested, Lauren suggested, and it wasn't like it wasn't funny. He suggested, what if he has Susan Day on, but he keeps wanting to talk about the Partridge family? And it had been like, 15 you know, years since it gone off. Yeah. Yes. There. And so that was how we wrote it. And then Johnny took it as like, are you seeing this, Ed? He really, he said this on the show. They're saying I'm senile. Mm -hmm. He literally thought we were now calling him senile, all right. because we had changed that opening. Wait, that was Smikes. the one he that said I thought it. was yeah, <laughs> yeah. He said it on. Uh, he said it as Dana or no, he, no, no. The real Johnny, Johnny said it on his own show. He started wow, wow, bitching wow. about Saturday Night Live on his own show. Mm -hmm. And Dana, I heard you say this to Regis, and it broke my heart because I had never heard this. You said to Regis in an interview, like, I don't know, five, six years ago, I saw mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. said that you heard that Johnny said, when they start making fun of you, it's time to go away. Well, he would say it at, over at, in Burbank, just in the hallway, the big giant studio, and just yell it out. They're making fun of me now. It's time to go. Yeah, yeah that that. That but what, what I realized, and I would take it for anyone in show business, that eventually you become a caricature of yourself. If right. you're a comedian, it doesn't matter. You, I don't want to name the person. You could see someone and kind of go, is that a celebrity impersonator or is that the real guy? So you do become a caricature of yourself. It's kind of flattering, but... You know, for Johnny, hard, I couldn't get on the show after that. I know. Uh, those Nobody last from years. SNL did for a year. And he really took it, took it to heart. And so no, that it was heartbreaking for us. And, but then, yeah. then I think I also heard from you back then. So then we did the Carcinio sketch, which was basically right. Johnny as trying to be like Arsenio, trying to be like Arsenio Hall with an and afro it was a big and hit yeah. sketch. He had the pointy hair and mm -hmm. he had the elongated fingers. Yeah. And he would, do you yeah. see this head? All you have to do is go whoop, whoop, whoop. And the audience yeah. goes whoop, whoop, whoop. Do you know right? that a house is called a crib, Ed? Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did that not know that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, Robert, I did Carson two months before he quit as stand-up. Oh, wow. And he came back to the back. And he goes, who hates Dana Carvey? I go, I do. And he goes, that's my boy. Really? No, he, no, he didn't. He came oh, back Jesus. and said hi to me. But I remember it was very <laughs> was odd to get one. on the show. <laughs> I did do it two months before he got off. And he did mm -hmm. come back. But he came back. And you were on Saturday Night Live. So you broke the code. Yeah. No, I, I think. I, I, 
was I on? I, well, you got, I you must went have off been. in 93, I believe. You yeah. were absolutely oh. on the show, Dave. Yeah, okay, Dave. okay, for sure. But, but let me just say this real quick. Carvey told me that that he liked the Carcinio sketch. Yes. That he said, what did he say? It makes fun of both it's, of us? You know, they're making fun of Arsenio as much as they're making fun of me. I mean, that, right. that, that that's funny stuff, you know, that right. kind of thing. So, yeah. so I remember feeling a lot better about, and then, and then he did start letting people on the show again. No. Um, so, I mean, I, I was saying I got on somehow and, uh, I don't know, just to did my crummy act and got out of there, but, uh, stop he, it. He, he did. He waved he me over. That. Smikes, that's I amazing. That. And, and I left, I left. I didn't go. <laughs> you, you gave him the finger. Well, the guy backstage, Macaulay said, he goes, get on there, hit your mark and get off. And I go, what if Johnny oh. waves you over? And he goes, he won't just go do it. And I go, oh, oh my God. So I and went out did? and turned and left and he goes, there he is. And uh, what, oh, did the little double tap and he goes, wink. He goes, Martin Short was with him. And he goes, have him come over. And he goes, I'm trying to, but he won't look at me. And he goes, he's too nervous. All right, there he goes. All right, well, that was David Spade. He said and, that on the air? Yeah. That's amazing. And then he came backstage. <laughs> Where were you? Uh, and Where I the was, fuck yeah, were you? They they left me there with egg. I had my shirt off. You made a fucking fool of <laughs> Yeah, and it was a B.O. fucking torrential storm back in my room because I was so scared. I have my shirt off and I have Pepto-Bismol and they knock and I open and it's it's Ed, I think, Doc and Johnny. And he goes, uh, all three of them. I did. Yeah, he goes, I, did, I did. He goes, I didn't get <laughs> a chance to say good job. I wanted to come over and nice Please job. Stay. And I go, oh, I didn't see you or whatever. And he goes, Pepto-Bismol. I'm trying to quit the stuff myself. And then he walked away. Isn't that great? It's a fantastic story. He yeah. did a bit. He did a bit, but in in reality, he was um, he was broken inside, and he around, he went around the office and said, "When they start not not coming over to the couch, it's time to pull. <laughs> who put you up to this, Dana Carvey? That fuck." <laughs> <laughs> so it's you, Spade. Yeah, you're uh, the one who pushed him out. No, let's go. I, let's go, Ed. Ed, let's go back and find him. Doc, come on, let's go. <laughs> I'll hit him high. You hit him low. Hit him uh, low. Well, talk about McLaughlin too, because we got, well, that was a great McLaughlin group. John round, McLaughlin ran a round table. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to have everyone know you did McLaughlin. You did the Bears. So many. You did Clucky fucking Gaga Gaga Gooey. Hey, Gaga, what did you help Gaga, me with? Did you help me with the clucky or, or Schmitzke? You helped me with one of those two. I was almost in Schmitzke for a rough draft, and then it went to Sandler and Farley. I know. Which was it great. went to Farley. That was that was Downey's idea, and it was a brilliant call to take the two youngest guys in the cast and make them the guys. That was that was. What all. was I? Was I older than them? I originally I had it as Dana and Kevin because I thought it, this is going to be the first sketch of the oh, year, yeah. and Dana and Kevin are the guys, and then. I don't remember a draft with you. I know someone, maybe Farley. Shoemaker or someone said, I think you're and in this what, thing. Remind me what this sketch is. Schmitz Gay? Oh, 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 Schmitz Gay. That was a, became a film, didn't it? That was a big one. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no. You're no, thinking was the a, ambiguously gay duo? No, it was I was a thinking commercial a parody. Sandler and Farley did something by a pool. Yeah, with yeah, Van Halen yeah, music. It was a parody of yeah, all yeah, those. Uh, yeah, so that, that was it. You know, yeah. sexist beer commercials it's one of the ones i'm most proud of oh just it's great r- hysterical but that ended up I, I being also Sandler like and that the gay yeah. people weren't like portrayed in oh, any yeah. kind of like mocking way right the mm-hmm. whole joke was turning the tables on these objectifying these ridiculous commercials that associate beer with objectifying women so and funny. it just got this huge it got one of the biggest responses oh, I ever so got. great that was good Van Halen song in it Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, Farley and Sandler doing yeah. the conga line. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but Spade, I thought you either helped me with that or Cluck and Chicken, which is my personal favorite. Oh, Cluck and Chicken. I don't know. I mean, sometimes I just get in there and try to help anywhere I, think I you could. Threw but... in a, I think you threw me some jokes in there. Maybe I threw you Gaga Ga Gooey. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like me, the Gaga Ga Gooey. God, and Cluck how's and Chicken. me. That's... Oh, I love uh uh, hey. Sandler's voice and that was so funny that was a cartoon that was half cartoon commercial parody uh, yeah cartoon yeah cartoon super that's how I met the guy JJ Settlemeyer who ended up doing um, the first TV few years Fun of House. the TV Funhouse cartoon hey, 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 Five House. welcome back on my show uh, you, well, but well, you put Lauren's voice in there did anyone say anything that's maybe the hardest I've ever laughed in my life because I became a 10 year old again 
Like it was the way I would, when I was 10, I would draw cartoons of my teachers, that kind of thing. Yeah. And when a teacher would see, a, I would like giggle, like, <laughs> and I remember the first time <laughs> you saw the dress cartoon. rehearsal that the ambiguously gay duo ran and, <laughs> and then this little cartoon, Lauren comes out and chases the dog, Lego, my show, Lego, my show. And I'm watching <laughs> Lauren watch it. Oh my God. And I, I'm just in tears. I was like, you know, Lauren would call it, you put a beanie on the boss. You put a <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is that? It's just to make fun of the boss or a beanie yeah, on the it's boss? Like, it's like reducing the boss to a, you know, a yeah. lower status. It's like, he, you know, Lauren had a term for every comedy move <laughs> in the world. Totally. <laughs> I've seen every sketch four times, you know, so it's hard for me. <laughs> Everything you've anyone's written, I've seen a version of it in my one of my life. favorite <laughs> recent Lauren ones within the last five years around funny people, people who do comedy. There's only nine hundred of us on the planet. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a specific number. Like, well, maybe that's true. I don't. We know. did run some numbers. It's down that came to eight hundred ninety-eight. <laughs> yes, if you don't count Steve and Marty, <laughs> Steve counts for three. <laughs> Marty, uh, he counts for a hundred. I think uh, he's, Robert. He's we like asked really that um, good. Didn't we ask uh, William Shatner if he was okay with that sketch he wrote? I think he was right. Oh yeah, I pitched it to him. And he the liked Trekkie it. sketch. Yeah, that was a big famous sketch mm -hmm. that you wrote. That, was that a sketch still where, resonates all the time. That's in the a media. big, big one. Well, I have an affinity for nerds because I was an SNL nerd. I was no. as big a nerd as anybody. I was completely in awe of the show when I got there. I like knew who Edie Baskin and Leo Yoshimura were. <laughs> like I memorized the key. That's how pathetic right? and nerdy I was. Yeah. So yeah, like you know. A lot of my most famous stuff has to do with like Triumph and the Star Wars line is one of my happiest memories because I was like making fun of them, but I felt an affinity toward them at the same time. The, the nerds waiting online for Star Wars and Triumphs, mm -hmm. uh, they were all like, they all took it so well. They were all just comedy fans. Excited. It was like, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was like when... It was like, have you guys, did you guys, I'm sure you spayed a spat. You both probably got to meet Don Rickles, right? Yeah, I did. Yep. Did he insult you when he met you the first do, time? Do an impression of a gorilla is what he said to me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Smogs on um, one time, uh, Chris Farley took his mom to see him on one of the breaks on the weeks off. And he really? goes, and he goes, I go, what happened? He goes, we sat right in the front row and, uh, he goes, <laughs> Rickles comes over to him in the middle and goes, what's your name, Tiny? And he goes, uh, he goes, my name's Chris. And he goes, how much you weigh, Chris? And he goes, about 260. He goes, mm, the left side of your ass, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went to the next table. Yeah, and then he, so he knew that it was Chris, right? I don't know. I don't know. It's just all funny. That's he's so funny. He's he just did. like, I'm just going to treat him like anybody else. Yeah, he just goes, there's a fat guy in the front, sir. Maybe go for him. Yeah. <laughs> he has a little bug in his ear. Yeah. <laughs> when he got older. Fat yeah. guy, three, three, three. Lady wearing steps. a flower box hat. <laughs> <laughs> take four steps to the right. Fat yeah. guy alert. Closer. That's him. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> get him <Go. laughs> i took it as a badge of honor i love being ripped by oh uh, yeah Rickles. when he, when i met him i was a producer at the conan show i think or no i was doing triumph i oh. think and i did it for for rickles but but i met him first they introduced me because they wanted to make it okay that it, mm -hmm. you know make sure he would be cool with it and he sees me and he just says help Hello, Rabbi, which I <laughs> later heard was a move he had for a lot of Semitic. <laughs> that was know, his move. Like John Stewart told me once that that was the first thing he said to John Stewart when he. he went, I'm, yeah, he had his big tricks. Rabbi. Just but a now, good, safe, offensive, across the board thing to say. Yeah, you know, we've all got our standard zingers. Going full, full circle toward the if end. You think Triumph never what? said the buzz around flies around my ass before? You're yeah. sad. Right. <laughs> There's only so many mathematical ways to get at that <laughs> ass joke, okay? Mm. You, they can be flying hey, around. But Regis told me once, this was toward when, when Rickles was still on the road. You know, honest to God, some nights you don't know if he's going to make it. They give him two eyeballs. He's rubbing his knees. Honest to God, I don't know. When they play the music, he goes out and he kills him for an hour, kid. Then he lies down <laughs> like on the couch. Honest, I like honest to God. Honest, honest to God. To God. <laughs> 
Who's better than Robert Smigel? Honest to God, this guy, he's, he's <laughs> everywhere. I mean, you know, it really he, is. He I, was really nice to me, too. I, I you know, one you. time, this is insane. Yeah. I had an idea for a sitcom, and it's one of the happiest half hours of my whole life. I got to sit in the hotel room and pitch Larry King and Regis Philbin a sitcom where they played an old gay couple. <laughs> and they took it dead serious, like, this is a great idea. And they had already, like, consulted Rickles about it. And Larry King's like, Rickles says we can do it, but we can't be too swishy. Swish. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, you know, we would just talk about it. And Regis, the funniest was Regis. He was like, so, Bob, again, I apologize for my inferior Regis, but it's like, just go so nasal. if we do this, uh, you know, I know there's going to be a script, but not not really. Right. I mean, you know, we can get out there and Larry and I can just go off. Right. Just play off each other. Right. <laughs> oh, I mean, well, there's a story to the, you know, it's, it's a sitcom. It's got to yeah. have. Yeah, but Bob, I mean, yeah, Come on. Bob, learning lines, and yeah, I mean, we have a natural thing, Bob. <laughs> Rickles says, Rickles says, we just have to look natural. I'm like, when did Rickles become the oracle of sitcom? You run everything by Rickles, <laughs> Mister C C P O Sharky, C P O yeah. Sharky, 1975. Yeah, if, if you have a copy anyway. of that treatment, can you send it to me and Dana? Um, I don't think I ever bothered to write it. Somehow oh, they said yes. To just meeting with me for a half an hour. One, one, <laughs> one other like thing just, that Smigel has, it's one of the funniest titles, is the uh, autism uh, benefit. The Night of Too Many Stars. It's the funniest <laughs> both title. both of you have done. Of course. Thank you. One, well, both of you have done it. You, um, you've done it a couple of times. Dana, you did the first one, and it was one of the greatest bits that it's ever been on that. We've done like seven of what them. What was it? Well, Hal Wilner, rest his soul. Yes. Music was director. an incredibly great guy who uh, was the music, music um, supervisor or supervisor or at whatever. Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. And for 200 years, was, for 200 years, he missed the first um, 300 and he um, he would help me book. He knew everybody in music. Yeah. And he would help me book the show with, you know, he we had a booker who would be paid and then Hal for free would get me. You know, he got me Elvis Costello once. He got me Sting. And this particular bit, he got me Lou Reed. And it was like a surprise appearance. The people in Roseland, you remember we did this in Roseland and they yep. were crazy. And Lou Reed comes out and it's like Jimmy Fallon saying, Lou Reed, and he's going to have an all star band. And then one by one, he introduces the all star band and it's all comedians. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. on the drums, Dana Carvey, on the guitar, Conan O'Brien. I think Sandler was there too. Jack oh, yeah. Black, Adam yeah. Sandler, and Lou Reed played it perfectly. Like this is the all-star band. And, and then they did this incredibly funny, somewhat disrespectful, but <laughs> affectionate <laughs> version of walk on the wild side. Oh, I love it. And it, it's on, it's, it's on YouTube and, and Sandler literally like is right in his face going, <laughs> Lou Reed got mad at me. It was very awkward. I still remember it. That, after no, the, yeah, yeah. After the rehearsal, I didn't really have a monitor. I could hear it. He's going to go oh, and really? take a walk on the wild side. So he very seriously, as everyone scattered, just walked over to me and just was intense Lou Reed and goes, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do what? Whatever he thought I was doing on the drums, I go, I'm a comedian and I can't hear myself. Don't play like that. You know, he just got very serious. Maybe it was nerves. But then we came out later. He was totally affable. He was you know? probably just that, that was the only thing he probably cared about was that it sounded good. Right. Yeah. And I wanted to, I wanted about. to I wanted to play well. I just that my You're monitor. A great I drummer and, and, and you did. You did. It, it sounds amazing. Oh, that's good. I guess I got it on the air show. We just had a brief rehearsal. You but, absolutely. Yeah. It was kind of fun. Everybody, you know, Adam's an incredible. <laughs> Adam's a great yeah. guitarist and Conan's a good guitarist and, and Jack Black's. I mean, these are like all the most musical. Yeah. They just happen to all be there. And so. that song is brilliant, but it is very, very austere and very simple, which is, you know, take oh, a walk. On the way. Don't, you know, it's like, it was perfect. And everybody yeah. got a turn. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't cause you were the drummer, but all, every, all these other guys did solos in their different ways. Right. You know, and, um, I learned a few things from Smigel today. I learned that Franken and Davis hired him. Franken and Davis hired me. That I is learned. correct. His dad invented Crest White Strips. No, that's not true. Okay. 
I invented. I I, I heard that he tooth did bonding. He he was the de- he developed the whole tooth bonding technique. Yeah. Right. right, and I and Lou Reed hates Dana Carvey. These are the only Lou things Reed I hates picked Dana up. Carvey. Another one of my impressions has gone to the stars. I have insight <laughs> insight onto this r- involves you. Someone told me today. So Michael Gordon wants to go write for the the Conan show. He talks to Bob okay. Bob Odenkirk. And Bob Odenkirk said, wait, wait till we get Smigel as the head writer. And then somehow you got, you became the head writer. And then, I, Michael oh, Gordon. you're talking about the original Conan show. I yeah. thought you meant Michael Gordon wants to write for the new Conan oh, show. Oh, sorry. This is always back in time when they, they but he said, Odenkirk. Michael Gordon knew Bob Odenkirk? I think so. Or at least oh, casually. Hey. Oh, so oh, funny. Dana. So, so good. So oh, funny. Oh, oh my God. That's so funny. Oh, my God. No, you're not doing that, are you? No. Was he mad about Chippendales? Because there's a rumor Downey said I was really mad about it. And I wasn't. Yeah, that was something Downey read online. He read online that you, it was the most ridiculous lie imaginable that you like marched <laughs> yeah. into Lauren's office. Yeah. I just I like you of all door. people. I, you, the, I you, go, you were like, you'd been there for like four weeks. Yeah. I go, and you like, know what? Marcy would have tackled you know, the me. Last per- you could have been there for five years. You never would have pounded on Lauren's door. <laughs> yeah. That, was, that was clearly made up. But there's Lauren, a controversy get out here. around. Was that exploitive of Chris or not? People have their different opinions when he did the I, Chip and Dale sketch with his shirt I off. Thought that, I thought the opposite, which was, I mean, I just have an inherent... I thought the people were not laughing at Chris. Mm-hmm. I didn't see it that way. I thought, cause there've been a million fat comedians who, you know, exploit their bodies in some way or another playoff being sure. heavy. Jackie Gleason. But <laughs> the thing that I saw that night was an audience fall in love with Chris yeah. because he was so committed and he was such a good dancer. Yeah. He's a great, and he wasn't he acted dancer. like he wasn't remotely ashamed of his body, you know, that whether that's, you know, obviously not necessarily the truth, but that's what he projected. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was like, if anything, they didn't use the word empowering back then, but (laughs) to me, that's how it felt to me. Like, you Mm -hmm. know, the way somebody like Bridget Everett, where the person is, you know, completely unselfconscious about their body, at least it played that way to me, but you know, Mm -hmm. I would say this. I would say if you saw that in Chris, if you felt that 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 was happening to Chris, then maybe you should have talked to Chris about it and made sure it was cool with Chris instead of just saying tut tut. This is I didn't no know good. a thing. I just saw a young cast member. Yeah, I barely I, knew. Him. I did not. It, look, there's different levels. This was young Chris. I saw a guy very athletic. I think anyone next next to Patrick Swayze would look kind of chubby. And so yeah. Chris yeah. was moving really like a chubby guy, not like a next level. He was not even know. that big back then. No. And I saw a guy killing with physical comedy, but, but if he was sad about it inside, I, d- I was clueless to it. I was know? clueless too, if he was, but I mean, he, when I saw him at second city that summer, he was another person. I had the privilege of seeing audition back then. And he, what struck me about him at Second City was how graceful he was. Like he was the he's opposite a, he's of an fatty athlete falls down. who got yeah. who gained some weight. He's a, he's a, he was an athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was incredibly graceful, and that's what separated him. Mm-hmm. Besides, you know, his incredible characterizations. Like, but you know, so to me, that's um, the sketch was the only thing it was exploiting was his incredible was what made him special. I would you know? go by David's athleticism blink, only because David was probably the closest to yeah, Chris. I don't remember any problems. I don't think I David was the closest back then though. Maybe not back then, but after they did their movies and stuff. Well, right up yeah, there, right? That's David? different. By then Chris started to get like, like, you know, in the motivational speaker sketch, I remember adding, I had one contribution to that sketch because Bob was no longer there. Oddly enough. Yeah. Bob wrote the entire sketch. And Spade, you know this. I, I added just that little part at the end where he's like, Matt's going to shade you. You're here. Matt's here. You're, yeah. you know, that thing. Yeah. And then You're he knocks here, over Matt's the coffee here. Table. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and he yeah. knocks over the coffee table. Yeah. And that was like, I just felt <laughs> it needed like a physical topper at the end. Yeah. A good so out. we put it in and it worked. 
And then I feel, though, that it did lead to like the slippery slope of Farley knocking things oh, down. Oh, he's going through walls to the <laughs> ceiling. Yeah, it started, it started something that I did not intend to, ha- to happen. Yeah. Well, they're kind of waiting for it after that. Every sketch, they're like, what's he going to hit? What's he going to fall through? Well, certainly with the Matt Foley ones, yeah. But yeah. it started happening in other sketches, too. <laughs> he just walks in fatty, and falls Fatty falls wall. down. Fatty and he, you know, falls he, down. That's all you got, Farls. I would call, then then we started getting cynical about it. Like Chris, you know, we would just come up with different (laughs) names. But that Nancy Kerrigan sketch, she was a great ice skater too. Oh, that's true. There you go. Yeah, he could ice skate as well. Yeah. So that canceled Mm -hmm. out Shippendale. So we're even. I just, you know, when people say it's just very glib to like, you know, that sketch set him off. That's, it's just so. I just find that irresponsible too. Well, I never heard him complain yeah. about it in the years to come. So I, I, I think he was just like, if you're a young cast member and that, and you get a sketch that's a 10 out of 10 and he took it and it blew him up. I don't think he ever looked back and said, but I felt like. No, I, so many I, other things got. Did he ever take his shirt off again on the show? I mean, he, he fell around and stuff and walked through walls, but I don't remember. I'm not him. sure he did. It didn't become a thing. Let's get Chris's shirt off. No, so no. that's good too. But. It was, I mean, there was a lot of restraint until like the later, I think it was un, wasn't until it was like third or fourth year. It was like people mm-hmm. were running out of what to do with them. And, and it became like a shorthand kind of cheap move to have Farley break something, you know, <laughs> but he was like, Oh my God, Spade. Do you remember his acting in that uh, Tom Schiller? Oh, the film? coffee one. Yeah, just the way good. his face changes yeah. when he when he hears that they've switched Folgers. <laughs> that's <laughs> great, that's a great yeah. idea. How many takes does he get to trash the whole set? I know. That was all Tom Schiller. The Schiller vision of the Folgers commercial was a real hit. But it's kind of an, an, a gem that not everyone saw. Mm-hmm. But I put it in one. the best of because of that. Yeah, a great one. So that people would see it. Because it was, it was one of his greatest acting jobs yeah. ever. Yeah, they could look it up. All right, let's wrap. What, anything else for this guy, Dana? Let's see. Um, anything else for this guy? Your social security <laughs> number, just for this is just uh, housekeeping. Social security, social security number. Four. Just stay okay. on and do the paperwork. We're going to jump off, but. Um, uh, um, no, that's it. You did. They, no, we covered two, literally everything you've ever done. Well, we did a lot of SNL, but obviously Robert and I did the Dana Carvey show, and he. Oh, yeah. oh my God! And biggestly, that gay is so duo. funny that we didn't talk about the Dana Carvey show. It's all right. It's a really we're Saturday Night Live focused, but that was. Uh, You'll do a whole podcast about that someday. Right. We have a Hotel Transylvania podcast after this. If you want to stay on, I, that's what I'm waiting for. If you want to stay on? You you were. Zohan. Just a Hotel Transylvania 2 podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he did There's the clutch whole... cargo characters on Conan, which I loved. You oh, know, the Arnold. Or just the yeah. lips and the arms. Oh, yeah, talk about yeah. exaggerating. Oh, my God. We didn't talk about the Hans and Franz movie. That Hans, would have been uh, Hans and Franz. This is the part of the show where, where we just talk about how much better the show could have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll the Hans we, and Franz movie. Oh, we I wish we had to have you back. That's we horrible. saw I wrote all your stuff out today. And I, I knew there was no way this was no going to fit into an hour. And so I know I just it's, that's it's okay. more With, than anything. I wish I'd talked about that. Which one? The Hans and Franz movie. Because? Because it's so funny and <laughs> well, crazy. It's a hysterical movie. Dana yeah. has talked about it on here because it was the, the whole way it got put together and then it didn't work out, but there was so many. Hans and Franz, the girly man dilemma. But it was girly not. It was not homophobic. Yeah. It was just girly no, men was, are not um, are just men with big muscles like them. Yeah. Do you remember the part? Okay. Well, this is gonna. We can't. I was gonna talk about the Siskel and Ebert part. It was one oh, of my yeah. favorite. Yeah, that Tell was the whole story. You have twelve seconds. Go ahead. Hans and Franz were doing their movie, and they're running around somewhere, and they go into a room, and Siskel and right. Ebert are well, watching it's a movie the movie. With, I mean, they're they're not yeah. they're just doing the, the movie. They're in the yeah, movie. They're in the movie. And they're doing a cross country trip to Los Angeles because mm-hmm. they want to be in the movies and be with Arnold. <laughs> yep. And then they're riding a bicycle across country, and then at one point they happen upon a big <clears throat> a big uh, edifice, and they just walk in. <laughs> and uh, Siskel and Ebert, the most famous critics at the time, yeah. Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert are sitting in the theater. And it's just like, 
How's the movie? You like <laughs> it's pretty good so far. <laughs> They're watching the movie. Lots of we, action and collapse. Like they're in this, this in this dark room watching the exact movie that's taking place. So on the screen is them us talking to them. Yeah, it's you talking yeah. to them. They're like in their movie seats, and watching then on the, screen, on the screen is us talking. You see to them. them watching the movie, right? But and it's like like four seconds behind. Four seconds like, behind. Got it. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, and then eventually they get kidnapped because they're girly men right like you go to check in on mm -hmm. them later and they're gone <laughs> because the, the the evil villain has kidnapped he's like remember sonny bono disappears and right uh i can't remember who who famous girly <laughs> men of the, day. the bad the bad guy had a big button that said hurt the weather and then we cut to yes, Stal well, stallone we doing, would look out his window go hey the weather seems hurt somehow you know that yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was uh, going to be Dolph Lundgren. Mm -hmm. And he had Dolph like Lundgren. this kind of like final solution villain kind of thing where I am going to eliminate all the girly man and from so the well. face of the earth. <laughs> and then he turned to the camera and said, and I'm going to hurt the environment. <laughs> oh, that's right. Like, the, and the button that said hurt the environment. That's right. Yeah, because we were obsessed. My, I, I desperately wanted to do like Mike Myers was my hero later because he with Dr. Evil created a character that remember all these eighties mm -hmm. comedies, the villain, you always had to like, take it seriously for like, mm -hmm. right. Rather than a you funny know, whether villain. it was Max yeah. von Sydow or in strange brew mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. there, you always had to have these obligatory villains. And so we were trying to make fun of that and have the villain be as funny as the, and Mike, and then Mike ended up doing <laughs> perfect. Good for Mike. <laughs> Good for Mike. All right, I go anyway, my show. This has been Robert Smigel. One of the, we'll one of I would say I, he's the greatest sketch writer uh, of his generation. You, you, he's in the he's in the discussion. <laughs> I'd put him at the top, but everyone can have their opinion. Jack Andy was the guy that I different different lane though. I put him in a different yeah. lane, but yeah, it's a different lane. But here's what I'll say about Jack: that was why the, all the writers. I would say if you pulled at least the writers of that era. Yeah, they would have gone with Jack. And it's because someone like me wrote a lot of I'm very proud of a lot of things I wrote, but I feel like, you know, there are ideas that only I could have thought of, but there are other ones that, that I think other people mm -hmm. could have. And where Jack, like nobody else could have thought of almost any of the yeah. sketches Jack Handy. Wrote. Yeah. Any <laughs> read through, you, any read through, you'd be like, oh my God, this is Jack Handy within three lines. You're like, well, everyone looks yeah, around. Exactly. He's over and there also, smiling. Like, people act like he was just the act seven guy, like the five to 11 Toots guy. But he was huge. Toots Toots is the was guy. the biggest character on the show for a couple of yeah, years. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally the biggest character on the show was a cat puppy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Toots I'm not kidding. Toots Toots is, look out. And we don't yeah, crash. Frozen <laughs> caveman lawyer. Uh, yeah. Uh, would always, they would get no laughs practically, but everybody from Lauren on down was in awe of that brilliant sketch. And so it was always, it always made the show. It was never at the end of the show because we yeah. were all collectively just so proud to put Your it on Honor, television. I am a simple, unfrozen caveman or something. Yeah, I no, my God, that was just the perfect yeah. use Your of Phil Honor. Hartman. Yeah. He did that perfect smarmy. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's almost Stuck like in, William I'm a cave, simple something. caveman. I'm but I just think, a simple caveman. I think, I think 60 million in punitive innocent. damages feels about right. <laughs> <laughs> so we all love Jack. Yes, okay. Thanks, yeah. Robert. Right. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, guys. Loved it. All right, talk love to you, you soon, buddy. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hey, what's up, flies? What's up, fleas? What's up, people that listen? We want to hear from you and your dumb questions. Questions, ask us anything. Anything you want. You can email us at flyonthewall at cadence13.com. All right, guys, well, it's, time. It's, it's time for Q&A, and mm -hmm. uh, we, we answer a question at the end of every yeah. show. We've got about, we get a lot of emails, I have to say, but one of the most requested, probably 50 about, We've mentioned this sketch called Massive Head Massive Harry. Massive Harry. So Massive the question was, 
No, the sketch, the questions aren't about what's that. I gave blood. Sorry, great guy syndrome. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad that the COVID was at least on the downslope when you gave away your precious fluids. I was hospital. just on a flight, and this uh, there's no shortage of <laughs> coughing and wheezing. And this lady, and then uh, I go, I don't want COVID. She goes, No, I just have the flu. I go, Oh, okay, good. So, all right, uh, a sketch with like Dana called Massive Head and Harry, and a yes. dog was attacking. Mm -hmm. The makeup on Dana's head. Can yes. you tell us about that? Or animal stories from SNL. Sorry, <laughs> you get one question. Uh, thank you. Love the show. Okay. All That's right. for David Himes. Massive, massive head wound, Harry. So they put a prosthesis on my head. So it looked like I had a massive head wound. And I was clueless and innocent character. I walk into the, this party. Were you at the party? You I think were in so. the party. Did you have a line? I think it was a Jack Handy sketch. I thought it was a smiley. Really? Dude, would Handy go that me? Maybe I don't know. Wow, we're that's a great find question out. for this us. This is another. Google it while we're answering because we're both probably lying. So the point is, just because we tend to ramble, but massive head when Harry goes around, he scares everybody. His head goes in a punch bowl. It's like pretty grotesque. And then he lies down and goes, I'm going to go take a nap. This is me. So I go on the couch. So we have a dog. It's a really, <laughs> is it a Labrador retriever? Um, anyway, so. During the practice show, the dog is supposed to start biting and trying to eat my head. And so it did, and it was at a certain level of energy and whatever. For the air show- And killing, though, dress kill. Still killed. But on the air show, they put so much more. I think it was like almost like Gerber's baby food meat flavor. They put like 10 <laughs> times more on the prosthetic. 52 snosses. So the Labrador, the Labadoodle goes shit house, And it's shit just- house. Grabbing and not hurting me, but just eating and wants to take the whole thing oh off massive God. head wounds. Head. Unreal. It starts to stretch out. Now, I have a thought in my head like, okay, I don't want it to take the thing off only because the sketch is killing yeah. and I don't want it to be killing, all oh, because it went off. So yeah, I put yeah. my hand on my temple, I'm holding the thing on and it's taking all the strength I can and Funny with the sound off. So I'm not speaking. Everyone's looking. The dog is doing that. And it goes on for like a minute. Yeah. Audience Lord Michaels apparently was looking at a monitor and crying with laughter. So funny. So it went, 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 went. And there's, it's hard to top a dog trying to eat a man's head on live television. That's the, for all you comedy writers out there, that's what I got. What's your point of view, David? Well, I think I was in the sketch or I was just standing on the side watching it and uh, did did great at dress rehearsal. It was funny. A guy, a massive head wound Harry comes into a party for no explanation, has a head wound. Yeah. And they had a little song. He's yeah. massive, massive head wound Harry. And then the dog does a great at dress. Dog goes crazier. The dog trainer's freaking out on air. The dog's really freaking out. Dana's trying to hold it. And I think he said, I think he smells my dog. Yeah. And he must smell my dog. Yeah, no, was I a did huge a little Garth with that character. Yeah. But I remember you had to stand in for me. I had to go somewhere during rehearsal. Didn't you have to put the hat prosthetic on? <laughs> yeah, just for 30 minutes. They go, put this alpha on your head. It took 11 hours to get a minute. hump you. No, uh, I made that part up. No, so I, thank you, David. Thank you. Uh, that's Himes. a great question. Yes. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. Production and engineering led by Greg Holtzman, Richard Cook, Serena Regan, and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. <laughs>